sort of pick up on some of the, the questions that uh, Senator Tillis was asking about Basel III and in particular uh, some of the capital requirements and how they affect uh, the regional banking ecosystem in particular. And maybe we can just sort of start with some background um, on on the Silicon Valley Bank situation just to make sure we're on the, the same page. I suspect we agree on this, but I want to sort of make sure and if not have a discussion about it. So Silicon Valley Bank, uh, I think sort of broadly agree – Agree that the reason the bank ultimately cl- collapsed is they were way too exposed to long-term interest rate risk because the interest rates went up, uh, their balance sheet deteriorated. That, of course, led to a liquidity crisis, and then the bank was put into receivership. Um, one thing that I've heard a lot of folks talk about, and this is in the context of Basel III, but also in other, other contexts as well, is the idea that we need to increase capital requirements, in particular on some of the small and medium-sized banks. Of course, if we adopted Basel III, that would, that would happen. But as I understand it, if Silicon Valley Bank, let's say in the years leading up to the crisis, were exposed to higher capital requirements, isn't it plausible that they would have satisfied those higher capital requirements by buying more long-term treasuries? Well, it doesn't matter what, what the assets were. You just have to have – capital is the difference between your assets and your liabilities. Um, if, they, if they'd had more assets of whatever character, including treasuries, then they would have had more capital. Exactly. So, so, so I just want to be clear here. If they had bought long-term treasuries, not saying they would have done that, but if they had a higher capital requirement and they bought long-term treasuries, additional long-term treasuries, uh, that would have, in fact, satisfied the higher capital requirement. Cap- in other words, treasuries could have been Tre- used. Treasuries, treasuries are capital. So, right. Well, no, they're, they're an asset. Or, sorry. Treasuries yeah. are an asset. You would have um, had to fund that somehow. So, but the then the follow up question is: Given how fi- how poor of a job they did at hedging against the long term interest rate risk, if they had bought more long term treasuries, do we think their balance sheet would have been in a better or a worse shape? They would have had a bigger loss, and more to the point, they would have still had overwhelmingly uninsured deposits. Exactly, that were very yep. runnable. Of course. So I, I, I want to sort of the, the point that I'm making, which I'm sure you can t- kind of understand here, is that capital requirements are not necessarily a panacea to the type of banking run that we saw in the Silicon Valley Bank case. Uh, I think there's a very good argument that higher capital requirements on Silicon Valley Bank would have made the bank run worse or even you know, could, could have made it a, a more catastrophic or an even quicker failure. Um, and, and at the very least, I don't think they would have helped. Do, do you agree with that? I think there's a lot to a lot to unpack with Silicon Valley Bank. Of course, um, and it, it, if you the thing is remember, um, it was a capital issue. They were trying to raise capital. That was what was going on, and and the market was very focused on their portfolio losses, which were highlighted by the fact that they tried to raise capital, and so there was a capital issue there. Now you're right. If you had filled the capital hole by but you have to retain earnings or or raise it or get some new equity. And if you just use that to buy treasuries, then, yeah, it wouldn't have made things better. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, so one one just final question I have just really is about the, the operation of the Fed here. And, you know, we've talked about this privately. I've talked about this a lot on this committee. I know the chairman uh, shares this concern. Uh, you know, we have a lot of mid-tier banks in the state of Ohio, and I think that that mid-tier, that three-tier banking ecosystem is really, really important. Uh, Huntington Bank in Columbus, Ohio, I believe, is the single largest SBA lender. If you look at the commercial and small business lending, a lot of it's being done by the mid-tier banks, and I feel like they're they're facing a lot of pressure um, from from regulators and and just in their business model because you, they have seen some flight of deposits away from them and towards the larger banks. So I really worry about the the potential problems we're creating for these banks from both a regulatory uh, and a business model perspective. But I I wonder, Chairman Powell, do you guys have meaning at the Federal Reserve? Do you guys have a standardized approach where you try to understand the capital cost of each tier of our banking system? Uh, is that something you don't concern yourself with, but or, or, or is it? No, we're we definitely concern ourselves with that. Okay, you know we all of us, and I, I'll just speak for myself, really believe that we're lucky to have such a diverse group of institutions from the community banks through the smaller regionals, the big regionals. That's a great feature of America and, our, and of our economy because they, they, you know, they're just important in their own ways. So we try hard yep. not to do a one-size-fits-all thing. Of course. I, I, if I can, just, just one more final question here, um, Mr. Chairman. I, do you have a good sense of 
what the capital cost is for the biggest banks, the sort of systemically important banks versus the mid-tier banks? Like what, what is the capital cost difference, broadly speaking, do you, maybe we'll follow up on, 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 on a, in a written question, but I'm very sort of, I'm very curious about how you guys think about that different capital cost because it informs a lot of the policy we make. Thank you. I'd be happy to have that conversation. Appreciate it. Thanks, Senator Vance. Uh, Senator Fetterman, it's been 